In the 47 years since Yours, Mine, and Ours became the fourth highest grossing film of 1968, it has not been unusual that I or one of my siblings are asked what it was like to be one of that big, wonderful family. This book is my answer to that question. My mother, Helen North, became a Navy widow when she was 30 years old. Her husband, Dick, was killed in the crash of an experimental jet aircraft, leaving her pregnant with their eighth child. I was six years old when my father died on June 7, 1960. For all of us, life took a 90-degree turn in a direction we could not have imagined. Just two months after our move to California, before any of us had sufficient time to come to terms with our father's death nine months prior, we were introduced to the man who would replace him. It was not long afterwards that Mom announced to us that she was going to marry Frank Beardsley. We would be moving to Carmel, California, to live with him and his ten children, who would become our stepbrothers and stepsisters. It happened so fast that we were left bewildered, and as small children, we had no say in the matter. Combining two very large families was rare, so the wedding became a major media event. After the wedding mass, the newly combined family was gathered for photos on the very steep bell tower steps of the church. This was the first of many times I heard a frowning Frank bark his order. Don't pose! How do you not pose a fake smile when you are an unhappy child who's just been yelled at? Frank went from one child to another, admonishing them with his characteristic frown to smile, not pose. Each of them flinched in turn and tried to find a smile that wasn't a pose. Over the years to come, it became increasingly difficult. It soon became clear to us that violence was the immediate response for any questioning of Frank's authority or decisions he made on any and all topics. We simply did not talk back to or question Frank Beardsley if we wanted to keep from being beaten. As time went by, the combination of our two large families attracted more media attention, and the story was carried on the AP wire across the country. National magazines such as Time and Life ran articles about the big happy family in California. Lucille Ball, who was the queen of comedy in Hollywood, saw the story and called Frank and Mom. Imagine being Mr. and Mrs. Simple American and getting a phone call from Lucille Ball. Lucy suggested that a movie could be made from their story. While she was researching her role as Helen North Beardsley, Lucille Ball actually came to observe us for a few days in order to get a flavor for the characters. At the end of Lucy's first day in Frank's presence, she approached my mother and in a serious, almost threatening tone, admonished her, you keep that man away from me. She left and stayed at the lodge in Pebble Beach for the duration of her visit. Having seen Lucy in our house, I expected to see Henry Fonda, who was cast to play Frank, but we never saw him. To have had a father figure like the character Henry Fonda played in the film would have been a dream come true for me. His scripted characterization of Frank Beardsley was wise, practical, loving, and honest. In short, his character was the farthest thing imaginable from the actual Frank Beardsley. The public image of the Beardsley family had become Mom's most important priority. She would protect the image of our God-fearing traditional Catholic family at any cost. Mom wanted the world to accept the fantasy promoted by yours, mine, and ours. She needed to believe in the success of the merged family so that she could justify the treacherous path she had taken us on.